Our next topic is classification one. Classification refers to the grouping of living organisms according to their structure. In the classification, we use these apparatus called the magnifying lens. It is used to enlarge specimens when observing external features. Here is a diagram of the magnifying lens. Post the video and have a clear look at it. Using the hand lens, place the object on a suitable surface. Move the hand lens with one of your arms from the object towards the eyes. As the image comes into focus, an enlarged object will be seen. Make a drawing of the image of the enlarged object. Work out the linear magnification of the drawing using the formula. Linear magnification equals to drawing length over actual length of object. Here is an example of a question on calculation of linear magnification. Post this video, work out the question before you look at the answer. Linear magnification equals to drawing length over actual length of object equals to three, six centimeter over three centimeter equals to times two. Magnification has no units. Here is another question. Take your time, work out this one before looking at the answer. External features used for classification in plants include rhizoid capsule setter in most plants, fonts, sorry, rachis in ferns, roots, stems, leaves, flowers, seeds, and fruits, and cones in higher plants. External features used for classification in animals include tentacles in hydra, feathers and wings in birds, shells in snails, fur, hair, and mammary glands in mammals, body pigmentation. We also use sensory organs like eyes, ears and antenna, scales and fins in fish, broccolodids and scolex in tapeworms, locomotory structures like limbs in vertebrates and invertebrates. Necessit necessity and significance of classification. It helps in placing living organisms into correct groups for reference. It helps us understand the evolutionary relationship between different organisms. Groupings bring together living organisms with similar characteristics but separates those with different features. It helps us arrange information about organisms in an orderly manner to avoid chaos and confusion that will arise if this were to be done a bit rather. Historical background of classification. Historically, there are two systems of classification. One, artificial classification. Two, modern classification. Artificial classification. This is the classification of organisms based on a few observable characteristics, mainly for personal convenience. It was pioneered by Aristotle, who lived between 384 and 322 BC. It involved grouping plants as edible and non edible, or as herbs or shrubs. Grouping of animals into carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores based on what they eat. Modern classification 
is a system that involves placing organisms into groups called taxa and assigning them names. It was pioneered by Carolus Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist who lived between 1707 and 1778. Modern classification also used the evolutionary relationship between organisms and their ancestors, that is phylogeny, to group organisms together. Major taxonomic units of classification. Taxonomic units are groups into which organisms are placed as a matter of convenience. Grouping of organisms into these groups is based on easily observable characteristics that are common to that group. The science of classification is referred to as taxonomy. Living organisms that share a lot of characteristics are placed in the same group. Each taxonomic unit reflects the position of an organism in relation to others in the classification scheme. A hierarchy of groups was developed which are seven taxonomic units arranged from largest to smallest. The seven taxonomic units of classification are kingdom, phylum in animals and or division in plants, class, order, family, genus, and the smallest one is species. Kingdom. This is the highest level of classification. There are five kingdoms. These are Monera, Protoctista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. Kingdom Monera is composed of microscopic unicellular organisms, mainly bacteria, while Kingdom Fungi includes mushrooms, toadstools, molds, and yeast. Kingdom Protoctista comprises of protozoa and algae. Kingdom Plantae comprises of plants, while Kingdom Animalia comprises of all animals, both vertebrates and invertebrates. Kingdom is further divided into several phyla, singular phylum, or a division in plants. Division of phyla are further divided into smaller groups called classes based on their similarities and mode of life. Each class is subdivided into smaller groups called orders. Orders are subdivided into families while families subdivide into genera, plural of genus. Genera are subdivided into species. Species is the smallest unit of classification whose members can freely interbreed to give rise to a fertile or viable offspring. Within a species, organisms can further be classified based on differences in color and forms. In human beings, this gives the races. In animals, the term breed is used. In plants, the term variety is used. In bacteria and viruses, the term strain is used to describe the variant forms. Members of different but closely related species can breed, but the resulting offspring is fertile, is sterile or infertile. A mule is a sterile offspring between a horse and a donkey. Viruses. They are found on the boundary between living and non-living things. Viruses are host-specific and they are also acellular, meaning they are not made up of cells. They reproduce by invading other cells. They have a simple structure consisting of a small piece of DNA or RNA surrounded by a protein or a lipoprotein. Scientific naming of living organisms. Scientific naming involves giving an organism two names in Latin language. It 
was developed by Carolas Linares. Common names are local names by which organisms are known in different localities. Why was Latin language used in scientific naming? It was the first language of civilization that was widely spoken at that time. Latin is a dead language, hence not subjected to a lot of changes. Binomial nomenclature. This is a double naming system in which an organism is assigned a genus name and a species name. Rules for binomial nomenclature. The first part of the scientific name is that of the genus and should begin with a capital letter and the second name is the specific name and it should be written in small letters. Rule number two. Look at the examples on the first rule. Like Z maze is the scientific name for maize, Z is the genus name starting with capital letter, and maize is the specific name and it has been written with small letters. Look at the others, post the video and have a clear look at them. Rule number two, when printed in books and other printed works, the scientific name should be printed in italics, but when handwritten, the two names should be underlined separately. Rule number three, the specific name is frequently written with the name of the scientist who first adequately described and named the organism. Rule number four, scientists must give a Latinized name for a newly described animal or plant species where a Latin name is missing. And that is the end of this topic.